wait one second. Hello everybody, greetings from Dublin and welcome to a musical Nauru's, a live stream celebration of the Baha'i New Year and the Northern Spring Equinox. So happy Nauru's everybody, happy New Year and thank you all for tuning in. It's, it's just, I think it's incredible that we're able to be together in this way, to connect from all over the world, to celebrate this festival together. I know that there are people tuning in from all over the world and uh, this just gives me such delight to know that we're able to, to be together in this way to celebrate this, uh, this very joyful occasion. So welcome everybody and uh, I hope that you are ha having a, a joyful, happy celebration wherever you're, you're watching from. So before we begin, I just wanted to actually acknowledge the amazing team here in Dublin that uh, has made this event possible because as you can see, I'm, I'm sitting here at the amazing AP Studios Dublin, which is tucked away like a little secret in the beautiful greenery of the Dublin mountains. And there's an extraordinary team behind the scenes here who are making this event possible and actually making it possible for us to connect and celebrate together in this way. So I just want to say thank you to Antimo, who is behind the camera here and who is really our host here at AP Studios and has invited us all to be together in his beautiful studio. I want to thank our camera woman, Sophia, who is on another camera over here. I want to thank our audio engineer, Adriano, who is in the control room taking care of all the sound this evening. I want, and I want to thank Moke, my dear friend, who is our host on the YouTube live chat. So Moke is there to make you feel welcome on the chat. If you want to send any messages or share anything, share any questions, Moke will be there to make you feel welcome and help you get settled into the program. And perhaps you could even share with Moke on the live chat where you're watching from, because it would be lovely to know where, where people are tuning in from to watch the live stream. And Moke will be there to chat with you throughout the program. So, happy Nauru's everybody. I know that many of you are probably seasoned uh, celebrators of Nauru's for many years. But for anybody watching who is perhaps not familiar with the festival of Nauru's, Nauru's literally means new day in the Persian language. And it's, it's actually an ancient festival that originated in ancient Persia and was or is associated with the beginning of the springtime. And uh, it's, uh, it's actually celebrated by a variety of different cultures and communities around the world, uh, one of which is the Baha'i community, which actually celebrates Nauru's as the beginning of a new year 
on the Baha'i calendar. And Nowruz is actually a kind of a double celebration for the Baha'i community because not only is it the beginning of a new year, Nowruz also comes at the end of the annual period of fasting that Baha'is do every year as a, a, as a spiritual discipline where we fast uh, from sunrise to sunset each day for 19 days uh, coming up to Nowruz, which is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a time of, of well, it's a time of struggle and, and change and reflection. And so Nowruz is really a very happy time, often very food oriented, when we can celebrate at the end of the fast and the beginning of a new year. And so it's ver a very special time. And so what I'm going to do tonight for this program for the next about, uh, about an hour is I'm going to I'm going to play for you a selection of songs, uh, the majority of which are are based on words from the Baha'i sacred writings. Um, they're words that I have set to music in the form of songs. And in between the songs, I'm going to share with you uh, some personal reflections and stories and, and thoughts about the meaning of Nowruz as a festival. And my hope for this program is that after an hour together, you will come away with a kind of renewed sense, or perhaps even a brand new sense, of celebration and joy around the festival of Nowruz. So, I'd like to actually begin this, to begin this new year, I'd like to begin with a, with a prayer from the Baha'i writings that I've set to music. And it's actually a prayer for coming through difficulties. Because, you know, I, I think that uh, in any culture, in any calendar, this, having the sense of, an, of a new year is a very special sense because it, it, it kind of gives us this, this sense of, of closing one chapter in our lives and entering a new chapter and sometimes even putting behind us some of the difficulties and challenges of the previous year and turning over a new leaf as we, as we enter a new year. And, uh, you know, in fact, I was talking with, with Mo Kay the other day about how, you know, in this part of the world, we celebrate New Year's Eve, of course, on the on December 31st. But then when the, the Baha'i New Year comes around in March, it almost feels like a, a second chance at a new year. So we can we can uh, sort of reestablish that, that intention to, you know, to say, I'm actually, OK, I'm really going to go to the gym this time. <laughs> so um, so I wanted to offer this prayer, uh, which was written by a man called the Bab, which means the gate, who was the forerunner of Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith. He wrote, the Bab wrote this prayer to help people get through difficulties. And so I hope that, that, that I can offer this prayer for all of us so that we can enter this new year on a note of confidence and joy for the new year ahead. So this is called Remover of Difficulties. Suffice if all things 
above all things, say God, sufficeth all things, above all things, say God, sufficeth all things, above all things, and nothing in the heavens, nothing in the heavens or in Nothing in the heavens, nothing in the heavens or in the earth, but God suffices. Is there any remover of difficulties? Say. Okay, so to begin this this little musical journey that we're going to go on together, this series of musings about Nauru's, I wanted to begin by sharing with you a personal recollection from my childhood. Uh, so growing up here in Ireland, throughout my entire childhood, I had actually never heard of Nauru's. I was totally unaware of this ancient festival that uh, has been celebrated in various parts of the world by millions of people for thousands of years. But later in life, I actually discovered that there had been this very subtle, kind of unspoken connection to Nauru's that had been almost secretly embedded in the, the, the culture and tradition that surrounded me as a child in Ireland. And maybe many of you might actually share this very same connection to Nauru's. So obviously growing up in Ireland, the, the major festival that, that I celebrated, that my family and friends and I and my community celebrated uh, every year was Christmas. And every year at Christmas time, my school friends and I would put, would put on a, a musical Christmas carol service uh, in the local church where we would act out, we would sing Christmas carols and we would, we would in, enact the Christmas story for the local community. And my favourite of the Christmas carols was this, uh, this song that told the story of these three wise men who kind of mysteriously appear in the Christmas story from a, from a faraway land to come and pay homage to the birth of Jesus. And the song was called We Three Kings. Maybe some of you know this Christmas carol. And because I loved this, uh, this song so much, I always wanted to play the part of one of the three wise men from the East in our little play. And so each year, uh, my mother would help me to put together a, a costume and we would put together these, these flowing, luxurious robes and, and, and a headdress covered in jewels. And I probably had some Christmas decorations hanging off me, whatever we could find. And when my moment came, along with two of my school friends, the three of us would appear on the scene and we would burst into song. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, Moor and mountain following yonder star. <laughs> Can't believe I still remember the words. <laughs> uh, and we would present our gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now, what I wasn't aware of at that time, for all those years, all those Christmases, was that those three wise men who appear uh, almost out of the blue in the Christmas story were in reality practitioners of one of the oldest 
spiritual traditions in the world, uh, a religion that had been founded about uh, that had been founded in ancient Persia by a, a, an ancient prophet called Zoroaster, who lived about three and a half thousand years ago, and is actually attributed with having inaugurated the festival of Nowruz. And this Persian prophet, Zoroaster, had a very beautiful message. He taught that there is this, uh, there is a, a great cosmic battle that is taking place every day, in every moment, within the heart of every human being. And it is a battle between light and darkness. And Zoroaster taught that the, the victory of the darkness was to be found in hatred and falsehood and cruelty and ignorance. And the victory of the light was to be found in three things, in good thoughts, good words, and good actions. And these, th these three things uh, really form the, the ethical foundation of this ancient religion known today as Zoroastrianism. And so for all those years, as I sang in the, in the local church, uh, paying homage along with my school friends to the birth of Jesus, little did I know that I was also paying homage to another great spiritual figure of the past as I stood in that church singing my heart out in the costume of an ancient Zoroastrian priest. <laughs> and the reason that I, 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 I tell this story, what is so important about these, these three wise men who appear in the Christmas story and are, are, are sometimes referred to as the Magi, is that these three Zoroastrians did not uh, view their own spiritual tradition as existing in a vacuum from which other traditions were to be excluded. Actually, on the contrary, far from viewing other religions as being in competition with their own, these three wise men actually, um, by, by following this, this, uh, this path of good thoughts and good words and good actions, they were, they were able to perceive the, the subtle connections between the great spiritual traditions of the world, and they were enabled to recognize that the same light that shone in Zoroaster also shone in Jesus. And there's a beautiful saying in the Baha'i writings, which I'd love to share with you. It goes like this. It says, man must be a, a lover of the light, no matter in what lamp it shines. He must be a lover of the rose, no matter in what garden it grows. He must be a seeker of the truth, no matter from what source it comes. And so for the next song, I'd like to sing uh, another prayer from the Baha'i writings which was written by Baha'u'llah, and which I always feel uh, encapsulates that same light that shines in the heart of, of, of all of the great religions of the world. Because what Zoroaster taught, that we should think well of each other, that we should speak well of each other, and that we should act well towards each other, is, is taught in all of the world's religions. And I think that ultimately, those three things come down to simply striving to have a good heart. And so I'd like to share this prayer with you, written by Baha'u'llah, called Create in Me a Pure Heart. Oh my God, oh 
my God And renew a tranquil conscience within me Oh my hope Through the Spirit of power Confirm thou me in thy cause O oh, my best beloved Confirm thou me in thy cause And by the light of thy glory Reveal unto me thy
So something that I've, I've really come to appreciate about Nauru's uh, over the, the last several years of celebrating it with friends and, and just particularly in thinking a little bit more deeply about it in, in putting together this program is the fact that Nauru's is a very universal festival because even though Nauru's is, is of course associated with uh, certain specific cultures, most notably with Persian culture, because of course Zoroaster himself was Persian, Nauru's in, in, uh, in some ways is a festival that, that stands above and beyond any particular culture or civilization because Nauru's is of course the uh, the celebration of the northern spring equinox. It's a celebration of the natural cycle of our planet. And so it's a very natural, universal moment. It's a very natural celebration. Um, <laughs> it's a very natural celebration. Um, and I think that the, the reason this is important is because Nauru's as a festival directs our attention towards that which we have in common. It directs our attention towards the those fundamental things that we all share. And of course, the most obvious of those things is our planet. And Baha'u'llah in his writings, uh, speaking about our planet, said, this span of earth is but one homeland and one habitation. It behooves you to abandon vain glory, which causes alienation, and to set your hearts towards whatever is conducive to harmony. The earth is but one country, and mankind its citizens. And just on the subject of harmony, I, you know, it's often been remarked that the reason that there has been so much disharmony between the great religions of the world throughout history is not because they have so much at odds with each other, but is actually because they really have so much in common with each other. And nowhere is this more apparent than in one particular strand, a particular theme that runs like a common thread through just about all of the, the great spiritual traditions of the world. And that is the thread of a, of a common promise, a promise of a bright future. And if we survey the world's great heritage of, of sacred books, whether we look at the Jewish scriptures or the Christian scriptures, or if we look to the Quran or the Hindu Vedas or the Buddhist sutras, or if we look to the ancient teachings of Zoroaster, or if we look to, to the many indigenous spiritual traditions of the world, we find that they, they each and all carry this common promise of a new day that will come, a future, a, a, a future in which some great transformation of the world will take place. And that, that transformation, that day, is, uh, is referred to in different ways, in, for example, as the day of God, or the day of resurrection, or the day in which the people of the world will beat their swords into plowshares and they shall study war no more. Or in my experience growing up in Ireland, it was referred to as that day when God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. And however it's described, this, pro this same common promise has been given to the world by all of the, the truly great spiritual teachers of history. And those spiritual teachers have, have taught their followers that that transformation, that new day, will come about through the appearance of a great figure, of a, of a divinely inspired person, who will appear in the future and who will guide and usher humanity into its golden age of, of peace and prosperity promised by the prophets of the past. And about 150 years ago, in the late 19th century, a Persian nobleman called Baha'u'llah, who came from the same ancient land as Zoroaster and whose name translates as the glory of God, or the light of God, made a historic and staggering announcement to all of the major political rulers and religious leaders of the world. He announced to them 
that the promised day of God was beginning now, and that he himself was that promised one foretold by the prophets of the past, who had been sent into the world to guide humanity into its golden age of universal peace and whose teachings would give humanity the tools required to actually build a, a, a united world. And even though Baha'u'llah spent his life in exile and in prison because of his teachings, those teachings have endured and have actually become the foundation of what is today known as the Baha'i community, which is uh, a community of people around the world coming together from different backgrounds to try to work together to actually build in practical ways this vision of unity uh, given to the world by Baha'u'llah 150 years ago. And so for the next song, I would like to actually sing some words from Baha'u'llah's writings in which he describes the qualities of this, this new day and age, this day of God in which we all live, which I, you know, I think we can describe as a, as a day, as an age in which even though we are facing the most monumental uh, challenges and crises across the world, it is also a time in which the potential for the development of, of human happiness and education and health and well-being has never been greater. If we can just channel our energies and our innovations into constructive directions. So this next song is from the writings of Baha'u'llah and it's called This Is The Day. So I'm just going to move over to the piano, so bear with me as I, as I move around.
So one way to think about Nauru's as a festival is to think about it as a, a celebration of light. Because being the equinox, Nauru's is that moment in the year when the light of the sun is shed equally across the planet. It's shed equally across the northern and southern hemispheres. And this is very significant in the Baha'i teachings because Baha'u'llah often uses light as a metaphor for love and unity between human beings. He says, so powerful is the light of unity that it can illuminate the whole earth. And I think this is a, a very rich uh, choice of metaphor because if you think about it, if, if we're walking along a dark path, the only way that we can see the way forward is by light. And I, I think that in some ways what, what, uh, what has been happening in the world particularly in the last few years, is that, uh, you know, I think there is this growing sense that humanity as a whole is struggling to see a way forward for human civilization as a whole. And at the same time, many people are coming to realize that the only way that we're, we're going to, uh, to see the way forward is by learning how to, to talk to each other, to listen to each other, to try to understand different perspectives in the world and to try to find ways of working together in united ways. Um, it's almost as if, you know, when we work in united ways, it helps us to see clearly. It gives us a, a, a sense of clarity and vision forward. And it's almost as if unity and love and respect is that light that enables us to see things that we just can't see when we're in a state of conflict and antagonism. And I think that, you know, this even happens in our personal lives often. I think, you know, we probably have all experienced, a, hopefully we've experienced a, that when, whenever we're, we're in a, an environment of love and unity and, and mutual respect, this often helps us to gain some clarity and vision for how to move forward in our own lives. And I think that environment is something that will help us move forward as 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 a uh, as a whole across the planet, and I think that in contrast to that, the more that we descend into the realm of conflict and contention and uh, factionalism and disunity, it's almost as if the more blind and distracted we become, because we've become so blinded by this senses of us and them, this group, that group. A sense of otherness actually prevents us from seeing the, the way forward. And just as Zoroaster, three and a half thousand years ago, acting like a kind of spiritual physician, placed his finger on the pulse of the world and prescribed a remedy, his remedy of good thoughts, and good words and good actions. And just as Jesus, also like a divine physician, placed his finger on the pulse of the world and prescribed his remedy of love and forgiveness. And also just like Moses and Buddha and Krishna and Muhammad, each and all diagnosed the problems of the world and prescribed the perfect remedy for the ills of their day. Baha'u'llah has likewise placed his finger on the pulse of modern man and has prescribed a remedy for the challenges that we face in the modern world. And I'd like to just share with you a, a passage that describes beautifully Baha'u'llah's remedy. This comes from a, a book called The Revelation of Baha'u'llah, by Adib Taharzadeh. The teachings of God in this day, revealed by Baha'u'llah, revolve around unity. And it is to this goal that a disconsolate humanity is striving. But with all his resources and capabilities, man is helpless to establish a lasting peace among the warring nations and peoples of the world. This in spite of the fact that humanity has advanced enormously in many fields of knowledge, 
and has within its ranks brilliant men and women who have produced great achievements in almost every aspect of life on this planet. But one thing they have proved themselves to be incapable of, namely to unite the hearts of men who are each other's enemy and make them love one another. Baha'u'llah says, The all-knowing physician hath his finger on the pulse of mankind. He perceiveth the disease and prescribeth in his unerring wisdom the remedy. That which the Lord hath ordained as the sovereign remedy and mightiest instrument for the healing of all the world is the union of all its peoples in one universal cause, one common faith. So, for the next song, I'd like to sing a prayer of Baha'u'llah for world unity. And for this particular song, uh, some Persian friends uh, helped me to learn how to pronounce the original Persian words that Baha'u'llah wrote. So, I'll sing it first in Persian, and then I'll sing it in English. This is called The Light of Unity, or in Persian, Nur Etefal. Inshallah, O Benur et Tefok Munavar Shavad Vadar Jabi Nejami. نقش خاتم الملک لله منتبه کردند گار گرند در دلای Unity may envelop the whole earth, and that the sea, the kingdom is God's. May the brow of all its people God grant that the light of unity may envelop
Okay. So, as I mentioned at the, the beginning of the program, my, my, uh, my hope for this presentation is to simply share with you and hopefully, hopefully transmit to you something of this, this new increasing appreciation for the Festival of Nauru's that I have experienced over the last several years of, of celebrating it and, and you know, putting together my thoughts for this program. And I really hope that, that, uh, that this inspires you to think about what Nauru's means to you and, um, and why Nauru's has this universal quality of being a festival that really is for everyone to celebrate uh, wherever they, they come from, whatever culture or background they come from. Because I, I really think that this festival, founded three and a half thousand years ago by Zoroaster and now renewed and reaffirmed in the modern age by Baha'u'llah, has this beautiful, rich, uh, symbolic uh, significance. Because, you know, it not only has this microcosmic significance as the, the beginning of a, of a new year, and the beginning of a new season and, and uh, the, the beginning of a new cycle around uh, of our planet around the sun. But it also has this, this beautiful macrocosmic uh, significance as a symbol for this new day and age, uh, this day of God in which we all now live. Um, the significance of a new springtime in the history of human civilization. And I think Nauru's is also a reminder on a personal level. It's a beautiful annual reminder that in our personal lives, no matter how dark and cold the winter ever gets, Nauru's is this reminder that the springtime always comes around. And I think that this, this symbolic richness of Nauru's is something that I've really come to appreciate so much because, you know, Nauru's being the equinox, uh, the spring equinox in the Northern Hemisphere, Nauru's is essentially that moment in the year when the length of the day begins to surpass the length of the night. It is that moment when the darkness just begins to recede and the light begins to increase. And to wrap up, I, I wanted to share with you uh, a, a particular scene from a TV show that I watched uh, several years ago. Maybe some of you know it, it was called True Detective. And this particular scene always stayed with me. These two, uh, the two principal characters, they're two detectives, and they've been, they've been through this very intense crime-fighting ordeal, and they've come through it with their battle scars and all. And in this scene, they're having a very deep conversation. They're looking up at the nighttime sky, and they're contemplating all the millions of little stars twinkling away in the night sky. And one of them comments on all these stars up there and he says, you know, we have all these stories, stories of individuals and families and stories of cultures and civilizations, so many stories. But, you know, ultimately it's all one story. It's the story of light and darkness. And the other character looks up at the night sky and he replies kind of cynically. He says to his friend, you know, I'm sorry to tell you this, but uh, it seems like the darkness has most of the territory up there. And his friend says to him, no, you're looking at it wrong. Once there was only darkness. If you ask me, the light's winning. And so on that note, I would like to play for you one last song which is intended really as a tribute to all of those great divine physicians who throughout human history have periodically risen up like the sun at Nauru's to turn the winter of human civilization into a new divine springtime and who have each carried forward this ancient promise of a new day that will come, a day in which human beings will, will truly learn to see each other as members of one family and the light will win. This is called Have You Heard?
Have you heard of the troubles of Moses? So much light on the earth he did shed. Well, all the people they rose up. Against him, and they rained down their darts on his head. And he came with a message of peace, love, and justice. And the promise of a great one to come. When the wolf and the lamb will dwell together, and the whole human race will be. Have you heard of the sufferings of Jesus? How pure and selfless he was. Well, all the people they rose up. Only son on a cross, and he came with a message of peace, love, and justice, and the promise of a great one. When on earth it will be as in heaven, and the whole human race will be one. Now, have you heard of the sign? Of Zoroaster, when he stood between darkness and fire, well, all the people they rose up. They burned his noble name on a funeral pyre, and he came with a message of peace, love, and justice, and the promise of a great one. Light will illuminate the darkness, and the whole human race will be one. Now, have you heard of the sorrow? Sadness of man. 
Well, all the people, they rose up against him and put nothing but sadness in his hands. And he came with a message of peace, love, and the promise of a great one to come when peace shall reign on earth forever and the whole human Have you heard of the struggles of Krishna when he rode with armies of justice at his side? Well, all the people they rose up against him. Drove with hordes of darkness to put out his light. And he came with a message of peace, love, and justice. And the promise of a great one. the woes of Muhammad, all the bruises and abuses he bore, well all the people, they rose up. in his face every door and he came with a message of peace love and justice and the promise of a great one to Now I don't ask you to believe me when I tell you Baha'u'llah has come. I just ask you my brother to see me and the whole human race and
So that brings us to the end of our musical journey through Nauru's. And I wish you all a very happy Nauru's and a happy year ahead. And uh, I just want to thank you all for connecting tonight and tuning in. It's such a gift, as I said at the beginning, to be able to connect in this way and to celebrate together. So thank you to each and all of you for spending this Nauru's with me here at AP Studios in Dublin. And I want to just express my thanks on behalf of everyone watching, really, because this is thanks from all of us to the amazing team here at the studio, to Antimo behind the camera here, <laughs> to Adriano on sound, to Sophia on camera, and to Moke for being our gracious host on the YouTube live chat. So thank you all once again, and I hope that this will be your best year yet for all of you. So happy Nauru's and a big hug from AP Studios in the Dublin mountains. <laughs>